Wild Talents, by Charles Hoyfort, Chapter 18L, to the clergyman who told the story of the hailstones of Remiremont, the most important circumstance was that, a few days before the occurrence, the town council had forbidden a religious procession, and that, at the time of the fall of the hailstones, there was much religious excitement in Remiremont. English Mechanic, Volume 87, Number 436, Story Told by Abby Ganoit of Remiremont that, upon the afternoon of the 26th of May, 1907, the Abbey was in his library, aware of a hailstorm, but paying no attention to it, when a woman of his household called to him to see the extraordinary hailstones that were falling. She told him that images of Our Lady of the Treasures were printed on them. In order to satisfy her, I glanced carelessly at the hailstones, which she held in her hand. But, since I did not want to see anything, and moreover could not do so, without my spectacles, I turned to go back to my book. She urged, I beg of you to put on your glasses. I did so, and saw very distinctly on the front of the hailstones, which were slightly convex in the center, although the edges were somewhat worn, the bust of a woman, with a robe that was turned up at the bottom, like a priest's cope. I should, perhaps, describe it more exactly by saying that it was like the Virgin of the Hermits. The outline of the images was slightly hollow, as if they had been formed with a punch, but were very boldly drawn. Mademoiselle Landry asked me to notice certain details of the costume, but I refused to look at it any longer. I was ashamed of my credulity, feeling sure that the Blessed Virgin would hardly concern herself with instantaneous photographs on hailstones. I said... But do you not see that these hailstones have fallen on vegetables, and received these impressions? Take them away. They are no good to me. I returned to my book, without giving further thought to what had happened. But my mind was disturbed by the singular formation of these hailstones. I picked up three in order to weigh them, without looking closely. They weighed between six and seven ounces. One of them was perfectly round, like balls with which children play, and had a seam all around it, as though it had been cast in the mold. Then the Abbey's conclusions. Savants, though you may try your hardest to explain these facts, by natural causes, you will not succeed. He thinks that the artillery of heaven had been directed against the impious town council. However, people with cabbages suffered more than people with impieties. What appeared most worthy of notice was that the hailstones, which should have been precipitated to the ground in accordance with the laws of acceleration of falling bodies, appeared to have fallen from a height of but a few yards. But other, or unmarked hailstones, in this storm, did considerable damage. The Abbey says that many persons had seen the images. He collected the signatures of fifty persons who asserted that they had been witnesses. I noticed several details. One is the matter of the hailstone with a seam around it, as if it had been cast in the mold. This looks as if some hoaxer, or pietist, who was all prepared, having prophetic knowledge that an extraordinary shower of big hailstones was coming, had cast printed lumps of ice in the mold. But accounts of big hailstones, ridged and seamed, are common. Another detail is something that I should say the Abigniot had never before heard of. The detail of slow-falling objects is common in stories of occult occurrences, but, though for more than ten years I have had an eye for such reports, in reading of hundreds, or thousands, of hailstorms, I know of only half a dozen records of slow-falling hailstones.